Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 286, featuring the third and final installment of my interview with Joe and Hannah Williams of Wellnot Studios, the developers behind the upcoming game Serpents in the Staglands. This part of the interview, we talk about dealing with feedback, beta testing, coming up with a good title for a game, uh, inventories, and much, much more. A lot of great stuff in here, and I know you will enjoy it. So, without further ado, here is Joe and Hannah Williams. I've heard you say you received a ton of feedback from supporters and beta testers. You know, I think, uh, I mean, I've seen the game discussed everywhere. It's on uh, RPG Codex. You guys follow that? Yeah. Uh, that thread. Yeah, those guys are <laughs> kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> they know their stuff. It's great. Yeah, they're kind of scary uh, with the intelligence. You know, I had a, when I started to do my Matt Chat show, I wanted to kind of promote it on there. So I created oh, a sure. fake account and everything. <laughs> just kind of made comments on their occasion. I really thought, I mean, told them I was from a different country. You know, I really thought I had them completely fooled. You know, the first time I start mentioning Matt Chat, bam, <laughs> outed. You know? Yeah. But anyway, they're right? saying, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they, I guess they know uh, a little something. I'm just wondering, uh, you know, how does it feel to be on the other end of all this, this feedback? I mean, I assume it's probably mostly. Uh, just questions and suggestions at this point, right? But, mm. you know, have you seen stuff that kind of made you, oh, you know, that that's kind of a, <laughs> oh, I don't know what to think of that. Or Yeah, you know, I mean, if people are opting in for the beta, they know they've done their research. Obviously, if they're going to, you know, pay for that and help us out. And they know what kind of game they're getting into. And so we haven't really had any outlier suggestions. But a lot of them have really helped with, you know, UI and making yeah. sure things, you know, in our heads that makes sense, you know makes sense to other people and that's been helpful since we've been kind of after the Kickstarter and we were going to be doing this full time we kind of hit the ground running mm -hmm. on developing all this stuff and we might have missed some really obvious kind of UI changes that people could help with and yeah uh, like it's been beneficial. extra inventory slots yeah <laughs> mm. things that should have no probably would have made it eventually but our beta testers really helped with mm -hmm. suggestions and that's that's good you know it, it amazes me now you can have these, I don't know how many millions, probably hundreds of millions of dollars are going to something like this Dragon Age Inquisition game, let's say. <laughs> and they can't even get the damn inventory anywhere close to being, you know, comfortable to use, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what is up with that? Do they... I don't... Yeah, I never played any of the... I played the first one a little well, that's bit. That's just one example. I mean, I could... Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could... I it seems like it's rare to find a, an RPG where it's, it just makes sense. You go in, you put your armor on, you, yeah. you this is junk, sell it, you know. Grid-based inventories, they're just, they're not for the future. <laughs> I don't know. I like to make it lists, I guess, now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's not fun. But I do think you get, as for us, we get used to playing something, mm -hmm. and then you don't realize that it's not usable because you've been testing it and playing it for so long so having these beta testers has been really great because it's someone who's not used to a system that doesn't work well yeah. if it doesn't right so nobody's been criticizing or making comments about anything other than uh, like you know minor issues not really yeah it's been I pretty mean, i think people on you know our youtube trailer or pc gamer oh, a lot of people don't <laughs> like the sound of the game but our beta testers have been good <laughs> What, they don't, don't what, like what do they not like about it? Oh, well, but if you don't like 2D art or... Yeah. Oh, well, screw, screw those people. What do they yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to buy it. To yeah. It. It's certainly not a game for everybody. You know, that's why we're making it. We want to make it for people that kind of miss older style RPGs that are tabletop inspired. Well, there seems to be a lot of demand for that. Yeah, I now. Mean, all these Kickstarters. I mean, we were just talking about the TSI. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Seven Dragon Saga. What, what do you think of that project? That should be great. I mean, yeah, I think it should be cool. I really liked. Um, I don't know what it's called. Kind of like uh, when you're arbitrating your character, you you create the uh, kind of personality behind them, and you yeah. get rewarded for following up with that. That's kind of a neat. I really like that system and the way they had yeah. it um, laid out. Although I think their pitch wasn't as flashy as maybe some other Kickstarter pitches. So I hope they still get the crowd that wouldn't just immediately back a gold box successor yeah i yeah, bet they'll make it I was, I was kind of wondering about that too i mean on the one hand gold box i mean people that grew up playing those i mean it's, that's all they have to hear they don't even probably won't even watch the video right yeah <laughs> probably for sure uh but yeah i don't know could it 
They could have jazzed it up a bit. Seems like maybe they'll come. Maybe they'll update the video. Oh, that's true. You know, if they don't get a, the kind of reception they want. I mean, I've already pledged. I didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we pledged. I mean, they could have had a PowerPoint, and I would have pledged. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't even need a video, just an image of a gold box game, <laughs> rim game. They could have just had a gold border around it. Now. Sure, yeah. <laughs> what a pleasure yeah. that. Well, so here's a question. Uh, will there be a history of the Staglands available to read, I guess as a separate PDF or a book or something, or is it all in the game? Um, there's going to be a little bit of lore in the manual and more in the journal, which is for people who pledged our Kickstarter or bought off our site. Um, mm -hmm. But there's not going to be a history textbook specifically planned now. Well, you could probably write change. one if we make enough money. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's uh, a journal that goes with this that we won't, the only people that kickstarted it have? No, you can get the journal if you order it off uh, our website. We're just doing that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. Whew. Extra incentive. So oh, it's not yeah. like, uh, turn to page 12 or entry 20 in the journal. Yeah, there's lots of, there's a handbook that... Um, That's the journal, it's a handbook. Yeah, there's the handbook, and then there's the manual that has a little more of generic information, but it has kind of like decoding things that might help you with certain like native puzzles that are different languages. And, yeah, or we have an incantation book in the game, which is you can type in words to shout, and things happen, like day turns to night, or... You light a torch, or you pickpocket somebody, oh, um, and so the enchanter-like vibe to it. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the handbook has some special chants, incantations written in it that other people wouldn't know about. It's kind of written in the perspective of that priest I mentioned earlier. That kind of helps you at the beginning of the game. It kind of gives it to you as like a travel guide, mm -hmm. assuming you aren't coming down for the dire reasons that the game starts. And so it's kind of funny, and he has a different perspective of the game world than you might actually see. Yeah, it's not always, I mean, it is accurate, but since it's from this priest's perspective, it's not, you know, from like a game master's perspective. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, how long does it, this is a totally different topic. Sorry. Sure. How long does it take to create and animate a single character sprite? Oh, boy. Two days? Um, I got, well, the sprite's made up of um, the head. Uh, shield potential and then like a, a normal weapon like a sword or a bow or something but those are separate um, but each sprite I want to say is about a thousand frames that are hand drawn um, that same goes, same goes for the head and the armors and all that and for the armor sets I guess those those probably take two days that's well, a lot seem that, I don't know is that good <laughs> it doesn't sound that bad two days but I guess that adds up yeah it adds yeah, up so. and you know there's monsters and all that kind of stuff um it wouldn't have taken as long if we did like a four directional kind of character, but we did. We wanted to do the eight. I thought that was a little more interesting. Yeah, I was wondering yeah. about this, you know, because you said you wanted this isometric view, right? Yeah. So I like that view too, but I've never been able to to understand why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe you could shed some. I'm not an artist, you know. I've got no sort of concept. Why? Of this. Why? You know, why? Like, why do I, I like it. that better? Oh. Uh, I think it's a comfortable view. It's a yeah. comfortable way to look at the world because you can still see people's faces, not like a top-down view, mm -hmm. so you kind of get a personal connection. Um, you should ask me. I actually I get a little motion sick with first-person games, so I only <laughs> play isometric games. Yeah. It's a nice tactical... I mean, for a game like this, you know, you want kind of that tactical view that you know, a game like StarCraft might have or, you know, even like Dark Sun or Baldur's Gate or any of these, you get a nice kind of perspective. And it's a familiar perspective, I think, in the, the RPG genre nowadays that people like. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was Ultima 7. Is that the, the Black Gate? Yeah. I always thought that one was a little strange. Like, his little angle wasn't quite right on or something. Yeah. I think there was a mod to kind of, fi like, not fix it, but change it. You kind of want to take the game roll and just, like, <laughs> <laughs> shift it. Skew it. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, it's like the whole time you're like, uh, I feel like kind of <laughs> funny playing it somehow. I played that long after it came out, and I'm so I was so used to the the ones that you know are mostly used that it was extremely jarring. But yeah. we did take some time to figure out kind of an optimal mm -hmm. angle too. Yeah, it took some finesse. Yeah, certainly. All right, so just a couple last questions here, folks. Uh, now, one, are, there, are you going to have mod tools with this or level editors included? We are not, yeah. We didn't have enough, um, I guess, kind of time to implement the game starting how we did to make that feasible. So I suppose somebody could try, but we really don't have any tools to 
add things on. We have an expansion coming out after we finish it that gives you the last five levels um, that you can get, and it takes place on some southern islands uh, south of the peninsula. It's free. And it'll be free, and that finishes it off. But there aren't any mod tools specifically to extend the game. Hmm. I don't know if you know this or not, but it was, a, I thought, an interesting question. So do you know how many lines of dialogue there are in the game? We don't. You're no better than I, but no, I don't. No, we don't know. But there are, there are quite a few. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't talk to everybody. Some people just aren't interested in talking to you. Namely, you know, civilians, settlers, people on the roads in tunics and little felt hats, maybe. Sure. But um, the interesting people... And the rats. <laughs> rats. Telepathically, yeah. rats are talk extremely communicative. Yeah, they're really chatty. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, ask us when uh, the game's released. We'll let you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. That'd be fun to know. We've written a lot. Well, this, it's going to be released soon, right? I don't. Do you have a month or date picked out yet? For, yes. I, I didn't see. Oh, there is one. Okay, when? There well, is. Well, um, in our trailer, we put a little fun rune code at the end um, to decipher, and it was our release date. But it's May 28th. May 28th. That's not a, that. What is that? A couple months from now, or two, yeah. three months? Huh. We are going into polish and finalizing all the levels. Are we gonna do that early access thing, and just go straight to? We're gonna just release it. I think. Yeah, we had our. Oh, I wish I could give you a hug right now. <laughs> I'm so tired of that early access. It's a weird phenomenon that's yeah. occurred. But... I can see why developers do it. Mm -hmm. um, I can too. Yeah, exploit the hell out of the game. Yeah, right. But yeah. we want to just release the game as a complete product. Yeah, good for you. I heartily approve of that. Oh, sure. I endorse that one hundred percent. Feel bad for our beta testers sometimes, since they're they've seen it so early on and it's so changed since you know version one that yeah. they're not going to be able to really probably experience it for the first time. Yeah, you send them a pizza every now and then, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They got yeah, they their they got their it. word in. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's about it uh, for me. For me, I did want to ask this one last thing though, just for kind of for fun. So long, I guess it's been a while now, but I had Mark Soderwall on the show, and uh, he told me about this thing they did at Lucas Arts. I think you actually mentioned you like the Lucas Arts games, right? Yeah. Uh, so they had a guy there named Harry Kinney, and he would ask whenever anybody came to him with a pitch for a game, he told them that they had to they had to complete this sentence, right? So it was, for the first time ever, dot, dot, dot. I thought that was kind of unfair, kind of a jerky move. <laughs> you know, nice. like, but I guess people could do it like uh, Prince of Persia. Well, you know, for, for the first time ever, control time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Something like that. So is there anything we could say about Serpent in the Staglands? It's uh, for the first time ever. Maybe. Uh, no, for the first time ever experience the a Transylvanian Bronze Age as a god. <laughs> yeah, that sums it up pretty well. Experience the Transylvanian... Oh, sure, Bro I lost part of that. <laughs> Bro uh, the bronze Age. Bronze oh, Age. the Transylvanian Bronze Age yeah. as a god. Yeah, I think that's probably a first. Yeah, yeah that seems... Can't think of anything. Most epic. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Castlevania, but... I don't know if that's the Bronze Age. It was definitely not the Bronze Age. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, sounds like a great game to me. I've already uh, pre-ordered mine. If you haven't pre-ordered yours, though, uh, what's the name of that website to go to to uh, pick that up? The serpentinthestacklands.com slash order. Or just, you can see that <laughs> there's a big link on serpentinthestacklands.com. Yeah. That's the first puzzle. You know, if you can't figure out how to buy the game, don't even... You it is it. Just give up there. Yeah. <laughs> how, how much is it? Is it going to go on sale or what? It's going to be nineteen ninety nine, twenty. Yeah. Um, oh, so that's that's a good deal. Is that how much? Never pay more than twenty dollars for a video game. Never. <laughs> it's gonna have. You said it has. It's gonna have in app purchasing as part of this. No. No. I'll think better of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, thanks, guys. That was fun. This was great. Thanks yeah, for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. If you want any input on the game, you know, I can always. Uh, give you my own suggestions and things you know you probably know I'm kind of well known for my game names we are 
<laughs> a lot of people do come to me uh, for help naming their games. Uh, you probably you probably knew knew this already. Oh yeah, we should have done that earlier in the process, maybe. But <laughs> well, I'm kind of proud of that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The, the Barton's Tale. You probably played that series. Barton's, yeah. Bart, Barton's Gate. I think you mentioned. Oh sure. They tweaked the title a little bit. Oh, the original little, was better. Yeah. Yeah, but if you guys, uh, you know, I was I was thinking of this for you guys. If you're not happy with your title, so what do you think about this? Okay, you ready for this? Like, it's free of charge. Sure. Oh, wow. Okay. Great. <laughs> Rodent. <laughs> Wait, not done, eh? Hey? <laughs> Rodent in the Matlands. Oh, wow. Uh, what wow. do you think? I'm going to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe 28th rolls around. <laughs> I confuse a lot of people wanting to buy. I don't know. It might be a step in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll get the mainstream crowd that yeah. way. Yeah. Well, you got would, would have me at road. And okay. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll let you get back to your programming and developing or whatever it is. That's sure. Uh, so have uh, have a good day and thank you very much. It's been lots of fun. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. This yeah, is great. No, oh, no problem. My pleasure. Well, your dad went to the university where I teach at. Yeah. Well, uh, but uh, so yeah, we were looking for a tannery to get these print the journals. To cut the bindings out and for the covers, and we found a good tannery in Minnesota, and so yeah, we're gonna have an arts and crafts day. Yeah, get out our sewing needles. Oh, jeez, yeah. Was that Tanner baffled by your request, or is that sort of thing? No, you know, know they didn't even ask. We just got, <laughs> we just got two of them. A lot of time picking out cow hides. <laughs> yeah, that was a process. I remember talking to a Lord British, and he talked about how everybody, you know, he tried to get those cloth maps printed. <laughs> I'd always just look at him like he was from another you know, dimension. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to do something like that, and we did a little research into how we would go about doing that, and it seems so expensive because nobody prints. I just don't. You know, huh? it's it's one of those things, right? I mean, everybody thinks they want a cloth map, and then you get it, and you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> what do I do with this thing? I don't know. Well, if you're us, we stack them in a pile and move <laughs> yeah. them from apartment to apartment every time. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's the key. Yeah. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. As always, I want to thank you very, very, very much, guys, for your uh, support of my show, Matt Chat. As you know, it uh, really makes a difference. All you have to do to support the show, keep these interviews coming, keep the retrospectives coming, the reviews. If you like all this stuff, then please take a few minutes to go to the Patreon site in the show notes, and you can support the show at whatever amount you think it is worth and that you can afford. But in any case, I really appreciate it, so thank you very much. Ah, uh, let's see, what about that news from the Matt Cave? Right, so I've got some good news. Uh, Dungeons of Aladorn, you know, I interviewed that guy pretty recently on the on an audio podcast. You can go back and listen to that, Dan Nesmar. Uh, happy to say they have squeaked by. Uh, they had a $60,000 Kickstarter goal, and yesterday, actually, I think it was earlier today, uh, they had $61,000. So $1,072 over their uh, pledge goal. So congratulations to them. And I'm really happy about that because I honestly like the look of the game. And I'm uh, eager to see what they come up with. Uh, also, the uh, game Descent, what do they call that? Descent Underground? Uh, I'm not sure if I got that right. But anyway, the uh, Descent, new Descent game, uh, that also made its goal. Uh, they were asking for 600000 and they uh, raised $601,773. So it's kind of interesting, both of those games, very different games, uh, but they both just squeaked by with a only about $1,000 over their, their limits. So anyway, congratulations to those. Very excited uh, about both of those projects. Uh, and some other news, uh, Star Citizen, you know, this is Chris Roberts' big sort of monolithic thing that he's had going for a while now. Apparently they have released the Alpha 1.1.1. And, you know, I haven't got a chance to look at this stuff very closely. I like to, I usually wait till the game is officially released, but I notice they're catching quite a bit of flack over there 
just looking at some of the comments around this uh, alpha, you know, of course, I think people are just not really appreciating the fact that it is an alpha and they've got a long ways to go before their uh, official release. But uh, some people are complaining. I guess the they're still trying to raise money. They didn't quite raise enough to cover all the stuff they wanted to do. So they're uh, doing things like selling ships. So if you can you can fly around in a fancier spaceship, I guess. But it's to the tune of 180 bucks for these ships. And I noticed uh, quite a few. Uh, you know, it's kind of fun. Take a minute to look at some of the reactions they're getting on their uh, forums. Uh, anyway, if you're playing the game, if you play the alpha, let me know uh, what you think. Uh, let's see. Yep, I think that will do it for the news. Now, what about that ale of the week? All right, so for the ale this week, I've got something very special. This is the Black... Black... -er, it's a B-L-A-K-K-R. Imperial Black Ale. And it appears to be... Well, let's see. This, this is a double black... Uh, this Double Black as Night IPA is too massive for just one brewery. So they've teamed up with Real Ale Brewing Company, Surly Brewing Company, and Three Floyds Brewing Company. And I'm not sure about Real Ale, but I've had some Three Floyds, and I really like their, their ales. Uh, let's see. Unfortunately, they do not list the, the uh, alcohol content on this. Uh, but I was told by the uh, by Nick, the guy who runs the the shop where I buy these, uh, that it's got 10%. So I'll take his word on that. But a really interesting can design, got sort of a hydra, which I guess makes sense. You know, three breweries, a three-headed monster. Uh, anyway, it looks really cool, but let's get it open to see what it tastes like. Ah, yeah, I'm just here sniffing this blacker. I'm a little bit congested today. I don't know if you could tell that, but. Uh, I'm definitely smelling uh, the hops here, and it's, it's a very pleasant aroma. It's kind of a kind of a little bit of a floral-like cocoa scent to this. It just smells really nice, uh, but let's give it a taste. <clears throat> definitely a bit on the bitter side. Uh, it's got some nice uh, tastes, though. What do we got there? A little bit of a kind of a nutty-like flavor. A little bit of a malty-like flavor there. Uh, it's kind of evolving as I, I let it go down. Let me try it again here. It's definitely a little bitter, and you can taste the alcohol when you take that first sip. Then as it kind of lingers for a while, you start to get some other flavors. Uh, definitely tasting the hops in this. Kind of a cherry-like flavor. It's a little bit of a scotch-like flavor. You can definitely tell this is a on up there in terms of alcohol content. So if you don't like the taste of alcohol, uh, you might want to avoid this. Uh, if you're okay with it though, I actually quite, uh, quite like it. Let me try it one more time here. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got a nice snappy uh, taste to it. A little bit of a bite, you know, when you first start out, but then that uh, quickly goes away and it's, it leaves a nice, a pleasant aftertaste here. Uh, maybe even a little bit of a I want to say sort of cherry, blueberry-like flavors on this. A little bit of an almond. Uh, it's not that complex. It's actually, actually, uh, I have to say I really uh, like this. A little more bitter than I usually like to go. Uh, but all in all, very, uh, very nice brew. So I'm going to go four out of five drinking horns on this. It's not my favorite by uh, from Surly and uh, Three Floyds, but it's definitely worth trying. And it's interesting, so uh, I recommend it. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I found a, a really great quotation from a Canadian writer named Lawrence J. Peter. It goes something like this. If two wrongs don't make a right, try three. See you guys next week. Knowledge is power. Who said that? I don't know. Nor do I.